Good evening class. Today I am uh, recording my lecture on Introduction to Accounting for Servicing Business. Uh, galing ito sa workbook ko. So again, reminder, do not upload or do not copy my workbook because I truly authored that. So, the entire is chapter 1, yeah? Introduction to Accounting for Servicing Business. Our learning objectives at the end of the chapter, you students are expected to differentiate the servicing business with other types of business activities. We explain how accounting data is used by different economic users in decision making and also illustrate the flow of the accounting cycle. So, sabi niya sa introduction niya, business and accounting has long been intertwined as the latter or yung accounting measures the former transactions in terms of money. All business events are accounted for to provide a summary of these through the financial statements issued to interested parties of a business firm. And without accounting, business may fail to understand clearly what is happening in their business. But they may fail to manage it properly if they just assume things about the business. Kaya importante po na meron accounting, a separate part of our company who would take care of all business records, all accounting records which are in the terms of money, nakapeso siya, so that businesses or business owners may look into the financial condition and financial performance of the business in terms of profits, assets, liabilities, capital, and expenses. So accounting plays an important role in the assessment of management performance, thus inseparable from a business success. The performance of the business in terms of its income and expenses and the business status in terms of its assets, liabilities, and capital are reports furnished through accounting. An understanding of the firm's financial status enables the management to make, to make informed judgment and decisions about the entity. So what is a service business or what is uh, the servicing activity of the business? The service industry, a commercial enterprise that provides work performed in an expert manner by, a, by an individual or team for the benefit of its customers is a servicing business. So, base sa business dictionary, it is uh, uh, nagpo-provide tayo ng expert na service or meron tayong kakayanan na mag-render ng service to our customers. If so, if our enterprise is registered, then we are involved in the servicing business. From Wikipedia, servicing business are concerned about the building of service systems in order to deliver value to their customers and to act in the roles of service provider and service consumer. They would use their resources, their skills, their ingenuity and experience so that they could provide benefit to their service customers. And usually, yung mga ibang libro, instead na customers, ang ginagamit nila is clients. So for servicing business, ang customer natin ay clients because we are providing an expert, uh, our expertise to them. So sinasabi nila, hindi customers yan. Uh, clients natin ang mga yan. And the servicing industry ranges from business functions such as consulting and customer services, so, consulting. So, for example, meron kami accounting firm, auditing firm, or uh, hospital, or sa hospital ay uh, doctor, yung mga doctor na magpapakonsult tayo sa kanila, or mga lawyers magpapakonsult tayo sa kanila. So, they would provide their expert service to us. Also, it includes social work and child care. O yung mga companies na nag-aalaga sa mga bata or nag-aalaga sa mga matatanda. Or companies who are involved in uh, doing good things to the community, social work. The service industry is inclusive of accounting or banking. So yung land bank of the Philippines, mga banko, they are in the service industry because they are providing their services sa atin. Transportation, mga sasakyan, service naman yun, hindi naman sila nagbebenta. 
then nagbe- unless nagbebenta sila mo face mask, face shields. Pero primarily tra- uh, transportation, also ano, at service industry talaga yan. Cleaning services, construction, death care, yung ang tawag dun, sa anong sa death care yung sikat ngayon, yung pag namatayan kayo tapos may benefit doon, dadalhin pa nila yung kapaong, death care, service daman din yun, dispute resolutions, mga attorneys, prevention services, education, entertainment provision, fabric care, or yung mga tailoring, no? food services, personal grooming, mga parlors, public utilities, electricity, water, risk management, uh, of uh, experts, yung usually yung kinoconsult dyan, logistics, logistics is, for example, yung mga pagpapasa, yung mga uh, JNT, express, or yung mga taga-deliver ng goods, no? logistics, pero hindi lang doon ang logistics. So lahat yan, under sila sa service industry, mainly because they are providing their service. And in accounting for servicing business, and in accounting, generally, kailangan po natin ang critical thinking nyo, analysis skills of the students. It follows the accounting cycle kasi kailangan mong i-connect-connect yung mga elements of the financial statements. You must be able to understand them, interpret them, so that you would have a correct analysis of the accounting problem that we should or we would be encountering in the future. So we follow the accounting cycle, starting with the analysis of business transactions. You analyze anong accounts ang naapektuhan sa ating business because of that certain transactions. So sa analysis po yan. And business transactions are normally repetitive in nature, and the understanding of these would lead them to better recording and summarizing of these in the accounting books of the company. So, paulit-ulit lang naman po yung mga transactions. So, kung naintindihan mo anong nangyari or anong effect nung, uh, anong effect nung certain business transaction to our accounting elements, makukuha mo na. Kasi paulit-ulit lang yung mga transaction. So, characteristics of the servicing business. So, the servicing business is one type of activities because... Uh, Ang activities of a business, it could be servicing business, provision of service, merchandising business, that is, binibili nila yung binebenta nila, and third, manufacturing business na ginagawa nila yung binebenta nila. So, sa servicing business, it is a business and uh, one could engage in. Others would be involved in buying and selling of goods or in the manufacturing of products. And service business significantly differs. Uh, malaki ang pagkakaiba nila with the other two because of the absence of physical goods being given to customers. So for example, nagbibigay ka ng service. Wala ka namang pinapakitang produkto. Wala ka namang ibibigay na produkto sa kanya. Hindi naman nakikita. So for example, or, or let's say nakikita mo na ginagawa yung service. Hindi naman mahawakan yung ginagawa niya. So, intangible kasi yung service, unlike yung goods or yung mga binebenta na tangible, nakikita mo, na hawakan mo, na amoy mo, lahat yon They are not manufactured, oh, wala pong manufacturing process, and hindi po sila na stock O oh, alam, kung parlor kayo eh, oh, ipunin nyo yung mga service nyo, or service nyo, oh, kung baga parang, paano kaya i-stock? Paano mo i-stack yung service nyo? Or kami na teacher, paano namin i-stack? Pwede siguro ang ano, uh, mag-record kami ng videos tapos ibibigay lang namin sa inyo. O, naka-stack, at least naka-stack. Pero yung most servicing business or servicing, yung service kasi hindi na i-stack. And they are not transported. Yung service, yung transportation is a service Pero yung service, hindi trina transport They are produced and consumed simultaneously. Ginagawa at nakokonsumo simultaneously. So for example, nagpapagupit. Oh. Habang ginugupit ka, oh, the service is being produced and at the same time, nakokonsumo din na kliyente. 
nararanasan mo na experience mo yung service na nila. So, kinoconsume mo na din siya. Unlike yung uh, tangible goods, bumili ka ng candy o pre-produce nila. Pwede mo namang i-store, pwede mong i-stock at later mo kainin. You could consume it at another time. Pero ang service uh, service kasi, they, it is produced and consumed simultaneously. And services then demonstrates perishability. Services are provided to probable customers, but if they are not availed of in a specific period of time, they perish. So for example, uh, ano ba? Ang doctor office, doc, office ng isang doctor, 8 to 5 siya. Kahapon, nagbukas siya ng 8 to 5. Hindi ka pumunta. Nawala ba yung service niya kahapon? Yes, kasi natapos na yung araw, eh, hindi ka nag-avail ng service niya. Pero ngayon, pwede ka namang mag-avail, pero hindi mo na na-experience yung service na na-render niya kahapon. Also, when the service has been rendered completely to a client, the particular service likewise perish. O ginupitan ka na, o tapos na. O dinag-perish na, tapos na yung service niya sa'yo. So the service was done already, so it vanished. And there is variability in the provision of service to customers. Hindi yung, kung ano yung service nila sa inyo kahapon, eh, ngayon, nag-avail ulit kayo ng service, hindi exactly na yung binigay nilang service sa'yo kahapon, eh, yun din yung mararanasan mo ngayon. So, because each service is unique, it can never be repeated at the exact time, place, conditions, and assign resources to any customer. So, hindi po na ulit. This means that you can never receive exactly the same service from what you've experienced before. There is heterogeneity in the services provided even though the service is homogeneous in its type. Ano yan? So, for example, lahat tayo nagpagupit. So, homogeneous yung type of service. Pagpapagupit. Pero yung experience ng bawat isa, Sa pagpapagupit, magkakaiba po yun. Kasi depende sa situations, depende sa oras, depende sa uh, init, oh, depende sa condition, depende kung sinong magugupit sa'yo, depende kung naubusan ng resources, or depende kung nag-brown out. So there is heterogeneity in the provision of service, but the service itself is homogeneous, pare-parehas lang na service. So, sana naiintindihan na ako. Accounting as the language of business. Na-discuss na po natin ito sa chapter 2. So, oftentimes, accounting is called the language of business because the main objective of accounting is to provide quantitative information about the business which will be used by interested parties in making economic decisions. So, yung business activities natin, ikwa-quantify yan ng accounting. So, it is through accounting that we communicate kung ano ang nangyayari sa business to those interested parties. So, to the owner of the business, they are concerned at about the performance, uh, the sustainability of the business. Kailangan ng decision, uh, accounting information para ma-manage na yung resources natin, taasan niya yung income, paano niya kaya gawin yun by attracting customers or investors to the company. Yung mga lenders nagpapautang sa kanila, they're interested kung mababayaran sa kanila yung uh, loans or pinautang ng lenders sa business, including the interest attached to them. Suppliers and other trade creditors are looking for the sustenance of their relationship kung magpapatuloy ba na mag-supply sila ng pangangailangan ng business and at the same time, yung mga short-term credit nila sa ng business sa kanila eh mababayaran. Tayo naman, ako na empleyado or kayo in the future you would become employees, you would be concerned on the sustainability of your employment. Kung patuloy ka ba na, <coughs> sorry. Kung patuloy ka ba na i-employ ng business, kaya ka ba nilang sa huran magbibigay ng retirement ping mo, ng additional benefits at kung magre-training ka ay eh, bibigyan ka ba ng budget for those Malalaman niyan through the financial statements. For the government, uh, for them, for statistics purposes, for the determination of your taxes, 
and to check kung nagko-comply ka sa government rules and regulations. Next, we have the accounting cycle. So nakikita mo yung figure 1 po na yan, the accounting cycle. Nakalagay dyan 9 steps. Pero uh, if given the chance na i-edit ko itong book ko ulit, mababawasan yung 9 steps na yan. But for now, we will stick to that. So the first step is be analyzing source documents because it is through the source documents na makikita mo kung anong nangyari sa business natin or anong transaction yung i-record natin. For example, nakatanggap tayo ng electricity bill o anong transaction ang nangyari. Na-consume tayo ng electricity. O, paano mo lalaman kung magkano i-record mo kung walang source document? After checking the source document, you journalize the transactions in the journal book. So the journal book is the book of original entry. That's the start ng debit and credit mo. And then you post them to the ledger accounts. So each specific account has, has its own ledger. So ang purpose ng ledger is a summarize niya. For example, yung cash. Every day may cash transactions tayo. Sa ledger is a summarize niya. Makuha mo yung ending balance of the cash. And then you would prepare a trial balance. Oh, so, ang purpose lang ng trial balance is to check kung equal yung debits at yung credit. So, on the left side, the debit, the right side, the credit, equal ba yung total debits and total credits. Kaya po, trial balance. Itratry niyang i-balance kung balance or equal yung amounts natin. After that, you journalize and post adjusting entries. So, meron din tayong adjustments na pre-prepare. From our uh, original journal entries, i-adjust natin ang mga yun to reflect the changes in the uh, accounts. And then you prepare the adjusted trial balance. And basing sa adjusted trial balance, even sa ledger mo, na adjusted ledger, you will now prepare the financial statements na yan ang ibibigay mo sa mga users to make economic decisions. But hindi lang po dyan nagtatapos because in an accounting period, you should be able to journalize and post closing entries to close nominal amounts. So, temporary, di ba? Nabanggit ko noon ng income and expenses are temporary accounts because uh, they are not carried over from one accounting period to another kasi kinoclose sila. So, kinoclose po. And after closing, uh, prepare post-closing trial balance. Trial balance din yan to check the debits and credits. And after that, babalik ulit siya sa analyzing source documents. So, yun ang basically gagawin natin, that process. Pero yun nga, if given a chance na i-edit ko yung steps na yan, ang meron lang eh, analyzing, journalizing, posting, then adjusting entries, then preparation of financial statements, uh, closing entries. Six lang. Kung i-edit ko itong book ko, six steps lang. Because all other steps are optional. Ibig sabihin, you could proceed to the next step even though hindi mo pa nagawa yung previous na step. Pero yan ang susindin natin para ma-perfect natin yung uh, complete accounting cycle. Now, for economic events in the life of the business will undergo at least nine steps. The accounting cycle shows the step-by-step -step sequences of the processes that these must pass through. So, cycle siya because it will be accomplished during the business accounting period, which is usually one year, but will be repeated in the next accounting period over and over again until the termination of the business life. So, cycle siya. So, pabilog. So, paulit-ulit na gagawin natin in every accounting period. But other authors would prescribe more than nine steps of the accounting cycle, including optional processes like the preparation of worksheet. Kung may nakita kang accounting students na merong ang laki-laki ng yellow, yellow paper na may linya-linya, yun yung worksheet. Malaki yun. So, also yung preparation of reversing entries, and other unrequired procedures. But again, those are optional procedures. 
So, yan po, the specific nine steps. Basahin nyo yan. And business transactions and events are first identified kung ire-record ba natin sa accounting books or not because not all business transactions and events are recorded in the accounting books. For example, hmm, hiring of employee, nag-interview kayo, hmm, or winel kam nyo sa business nyo kasi kakapasok lang niya, kakahire niya, may sahod na ba agad siya? Wala pa. Pero is that a business event? Yes. Pero ire-record mo pa? Hindi pa. Kasi hindi pa siya nag-render nag ng service. So, hindi lahat ng business events are recordable. Uh, so, you determine if an event is affected any of the accounting elements inclusive of the assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, and expenses. So, if that business transaction or event affects any of those elements, then they are recordable. Uh, if they are not recordable, they may be disclosed in the notes of financial statements, additional na insertions of financial statements to support yung FS natin. Accounting principles state that accountable events are measurable in terms of money. So, kailangan din natin ng source documents para malaman kung magkano yung proper amounts na ire-record natin for that business transaction and event na yan. This then will be communicated to the users of the business financial information. And the recording phase includes steps 1 to 2, 1 to 2, yun yung uh, analyzing and journalizing, yun yung recording phase. The classifying stage happens in step 3 that is uh, in the ledger. So, ikaklassify kasi per account. Then you will get the balances of each account. The recording part again resumes in steps 4, steps 4 to 6, then 8 to 9. This is because step 7 is the communication part of the accounting phase. And in step 7 to C, it is the preparation of financial statements. So, yung communication aspect which pertains to the preparation of the FS where all business transactions and events are accounted for to provide a summarized report. But not only after the production of FS, because you will also be interpreting, explain mo kung ano yung laman ng FS. Though it is not part of the accounting cycle, it is very important for the proper understanding of the financial reports. It will be tackled in a higher subject. So, meron kayong separate subject na financial uh, analysis and reporting. So, on the on yung i-analyze yung FS natin at i-interpret. Ah, dito na nagtatapos ang chapter 1 sa workbook ko. So, activity 1, differentiate the servicing business with other types of business. So, ang ipapaagawa ko sa inyo, o oh, chapter 1, ay activity 1, activity 2, activity 3, activity 1, activity 1 2, and 3. Yun ang ipapagawa ko sa inyo for this uh, chapter 1 sa workbook natin. So, 1, to 3 ang sagutan nyo for this chapter. So, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, mag-comment lang kayo sa videos natin at sasagutan, sasagutan ko kayo. So, thank you for listening. Hope na may natututunan kayo sa accounting natin. Thank you for listening.